So I want to thank you guys for sending me questions. Some of you sent me questions for what would an Aquarius do? And I really appreciate that. I'm going to use some of them today. And I have some more too for next week. Um, and some of you sent me questions that weren't worded as what would an Aquarius do? So I'm going to use them for a different video. But all of the questions I'm going to use that I have an answer for. Okay. So thank you so much. And let's do our introduction. And then we're going to talk about today's questions. I am Queen Osset Haru, and thank you for joining me for another wonderful edition of Ask an Aquarius. If you haven't already, please hit the red subscribe button and smack the bell. Also, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and pass it on to someone else who may like it too. And please drop us a positive comment in the comment section and stick around to the end of the video because I'm going to read some positive comments and one of them could be yours. Also, if you would like to get a reading done, please email me. If you would like to send me a gift from my Amazon wish list, I got a couple Cabbage Patch Kids on there <laughs> and some other stuff that I want. So um, that is underneath this video. Underneath this video has everything that you possibly could even be thinking about. Um, if you want to become a patron on Patreon, that's underneath this video too. So let's get started with today's questions. All right, so here are today's what would an Aquarius do questions. Number one, what would an Aquarius do if their spouse asked for a divorce? Whew, uh, wow, that's a heavy one, y'all. If an Aquarius' spouse asked for a divorce, it depends on how the Aquarius feels about the spouse. Because if we're not feeling them, or if we want a divorce too, <laughs> we more than likely um, would sit down with them and agree to it and move on. You know, we, we would, Aquarius is real detached like that. So uh, even if it hurt, we would probably just, you know, do it and move on, especially if we were not feeling them. But if we were still in love with them, this would be devastating to an Aquarius. And we probably wouldn't show it. <laughs> we probably wouldn't show it. We might talk to the person and say, why, you know, do you think counseling would help? We might ask those kinds of questions, but if the person was hell bent on walking away, we would more than likely let them walk away, even if it's not what we wanted. If we tried to save the relationship and the person, you know, wouldn't, because most Aquarius will try to save their relationship. But if the person isn't down or if they're just done with the relationship, we might grieve. We might be devastated, but ultimately what you're going to do? Um, some people would try to hold on, beg, plead. Most Aquarius are just going to be like, you know what? I tried. Fuck it. You know, and it might not be what we want. We might feel awful about it, but we're, we have a lot of pride. You know, most of us have a lot of pride. So we're not going to sit there and grovel, especially if we know the person doesn't want us anymore. So we'll ask them, you know, we'll be straight up and be like, yo, you know, can we get this another try? Can we fix this? But after that, if they're really not interested, we would just give them a the divorce. Now, if it was an Aquarius who was low vibrational, they probably would be petty through the divorce. A high vibrational Aquarius is going to want to do it quickly and get it over with and be done. A lower vibration might be petty. They might try to be smart. You know, they may hold up the proceedings. They might do all kinds of stuff, especially if they didn't want to get divorced and now they're mad. They might try to do all kinds of vindictive little revenge type things, you know, take everything they possibly can take, you know, those kind of things. So it also depends on their vibration. If my spouse asked me today for a divorce, I would just give it to them and be like, okay, you know, obviously you have good reasons and I would give it to them. Even if it devastated me, you know, I wouldn't be petty about it. I would just want it to be over quickly. You know, you know, give me when give me what's mine <laughs> and get the step in. But I know a lot of Aquarius who put a person through a ringer behind this. What would an Aquarius do if their date started screaming at them in a restaurant? 
If my day started screaming at me in a restaurant back in the old days, I probably would have cussed my date out <laughs> nine times out of ten. But now, if my date started screaming at me in a restaurant, I would put my half, you know, um, I would pay my half if we've already started eating or whatever the case is. Um, I would, you know, it depends on where we are in the meal because I've had this happen to me before and the person didn't start screaming at me, but I'll tell you what happened. Basically what happened was I met this woman online and she had never been with a woman before. She was by curious as they call it. And she had never been with a woman before. And I knew this and I was fine with that. You know, I was like, okay, well, so, <laughs> you know, with you, whatever, you know? So we decided that we were going to go to a restaurant, have a meal together and just talk because she wasn't, you know, she was, she was screaming. She didn't, you know, when a person is bi curious, you never know how that's going to go. If they're going to be into it, if it's just a fantasy, you never know how that's going to go. And by the time I met this person, I was a long term lesbian by then. So I already knew the game, <laughs> you know, I know the game. So I know that this could go good. This could go not so good. So I was like, well, let's just eat together. If we can eat a meal and have a drink and laugh and talk, then maybe we can go have some more drinks and maybe we can see each other again. You know, who knows? So she was down with that. So the day of the date, I came to the restaurant and I'm sitting there and I'm having my drink, you know, and I'm sitting there waiting for her. She walked in the restaurant and walking behind her was her friend. Some chick, I, I, we talked about this date. We was in contact through text during the day. She never mentioned to me that she was bringing a friend. And I'm like, is this high school? Like what just happened here? So she walks in with her friend. Her friend sits down. She sat down. Her friend is on the phone, y'all. And she like, yak, 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 yak. Here I am in the middle of a restaurant thinking I'm about to have a romantic dinner and this woman walks in with her friend. And I was like, okay, I know that you're bi curious, but this is a little bit too much. So they sat down, her friend on the phone the whole time. Yak, 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 and loud too. I mean, rude and not rude, loud. <laughs> Cause she wasn't ignorant or anything like that, but she was loud and yeah, girl, da, 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 you know. And I'm just like, this is awful. This is the most awful day I've ever been on in my life. Actually it's not, but it's one of the most awful. And she's sitting there looking at me like at this point, she can tell that I'm not feeling this. So I'm sitting there and I'm like, I don't want to stay. I don't want to have this date with her and her friend. I want to go home, <laughs> you know? And I'm saying to myself, okay, how do we get out of this fine mess that you've gotten us into now? And I looked up and I said, okay. I went in my pocketbook and my drink was like $9 or something like that. I went in my pocketbook. I took out $15. I slid it under the glass. Oh, I finished the drink first. <laughs> Got to finish my drink first. I finished the drink first. I slid the $15 under the glass. I didn't say nothing to her. And, you know, she was talking and her friend was talking on the phone. And I was just like polite, like, yeah, you know, good to meet you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I slid that money under that um, glass, got up, got my shit and walked out. I didn't even say goodbye. And she was sitting there and <laughs> she turned around like, where is she going? I walked out. Aquarius and that audacity. Yeah, you had the audacity to walk up in here with her. I got the audacity to walk the fuck out. So I walked out, went home. Later on that night, she hit me up talking about, um, oh, I was just scared. I was nervous. I didn't know, blah, blah, blah. And I just didn't respond to her. Because I was like, if you that nervous, if you're that if you're that, you know, whatever, <laughs> this isn't for me. I'm a, I'm a grown, I'm a grown lesbian. <laughs> okay. I'm cool with the fact that you're bi-curious. I'm fine with that. But if you can't even sit and talk to me, if you're too scared to talk to me to the point where you had to bring somebody else with you and didn't even have a fucking decency to tell me first, 
If she had said to me, my friend's going to come, let's just, you know, go to the bar and have a few drinks. I would have had a total different mindset. I'm thinking we're going to have a romantic dinner and laugh and joke and get to know each other. And you come walking in with this broad on the phone. Girl, bye. So, <laughs> to say, if somebody started screaming at me in a restaurant, I probably would have done the same thing. I probably would have slid my money under the table, on the table, and kept it moving. If we had just ordered and the food was coming, I would have asked them to wrap my food up to go. <laughs> and I would have went and sat at the bar and waited for it. I would have cut it right off. If a person started screaming at me anywhere, on the phone, in, in the inbox, somebody started typing to me the other day in caps. I didn't even respond. <laughs> I didn't talk. Me and that person didn't talk for like a month. I was just like, well, obviously you're tripping. <laughs> so I'm going to go now. I don't respond to people yelling at me. I, mm -mm. After being in situations and being verbally abused and then cussing people out, I'm not putting up with that. So if somebody start yelling at me, I'm, I'm, I'm leaving <laughs> at some point. I'm either going to leave at that moment or I'm going to leave after I got my food. But bottom line is I'm leaving. What would an Aquarius do if a robber attacked them? Well, most Aquarius believe in fight or flight. So if a robber attacks an Aquarius and we think we can take them, they took. <laughs> okay. I always have a weapon on me. Attack me if you want to. You know what I'm saying? Um, but if an Aquarius does not feel like they could, you know, defend themselves, like if I get attacked by a group of men, for example, or a real big guy or something like that, in that case, I'd probably run. <laughs> My little switchblade not going to do much if it's a group of dudes, okay? I would probably run. But either one of those two things. Aquarius are not the kind of people that are confrontational. But if you bring the noise, we will end it. A lot of Aquarius would be very offended by somebody attacking them, period. So it definitely would not go well. It's either going to be fight or flight. What would an Aquarius do if they lost everything? Now, by everything, I'm assuming you mean monetary. Like lost their home, lost their car, you know, spent all their savings, that kind of thing. So as a person who's been in situations where I've lost everything, basically I just rebuilt. You know, if, if I remember once, oh my God, I remember a really bad time in my life. I was going through my Saturn return, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, it was a bad time. I was messing with that fool Voldemort. Uh, my car, I got into a car accident. I did not have insurance on the car that I got into the accident in. Um, my phone, my cell phone and my house phone both got turned off because I was going through a dry period financially and I had just got a new job. So you know how when you just get the new job, you got to get back and forth to orientation and you haven't gotten your first paycheck yet. It's going to take like three weeks for that. So for those three weeks, all of this stuff happened and I was just in a bad space. I was so depressed. So basically I just rebuilt, you know, I rebuilt everything from the ground up. You know, I got that job, which was um, teaching. I got a teaching gig. I started teaching. I got that first check. You know, I got the phones back on, <laughs> you know. Um, I got the car fixed. I got the car back, you know. Um, and I just, I rebuilt everything. You know, I built my savings back up. I just built everything back up. Aquarius are pretty resilient. So even though I was depressed, I was knocked down. I was sad as hell, but I kept going. Like they said in the uh, slogan, I persisted. You know, I fell down and I persisted. And within about, it didn't take long, within like a couple of months, everything was back to where it had been before. And that isn't the first time or the last time when I've had a bad situation like that. That was one of the worst ones though, because I was in a bad situation as far as romantically is speaking. And you know how that, you know how that was. Um, then the car and anybody who has a car, you know, when you're without it, now you got to ride the bus or the train. That's not cute. You know, so all of that stuff that was going on, but within a couple of weeks, I had everything back. 
you know I just buckled down didn't spend any money you know paid everything that had to be paid I just you know I, I built it back up but it was not fun in the least bit so I think most Aquarius would probably try to bounce back last one says what would an Aquarius do if their significant other died who who uh if my significant other died and we weren't on good terms i would do everything that you're that, that you can imagine you're supposed to do you know um take care of everything make the arrangements put them away nicely i would do all of that because even if we weren't in good terms i would still respect that person and honor their memory if we were on good terms or not Either way, that's basically what I would do. Now, if we were on good terms, that would make it worse, though, because emotionally, I would probably be devastated. If we weren't on good terms, I probably would still be hurt. You know, I would still be sad that they had lost their life in whatever way they lost it, but I wouldn't be devastated. If I was in love with that person when they died, I would be dev heartbroken, just torn up, crying. Uncon I probably would be inconsolable for like a month, you know, um, and I'm a spiritual person. So I know that death is not the end, but just their physical being not being here with me and I'm in love with them would be heartbreaking, you know, and I would go through my emotional process and, you know, try to get myself together, you know, and hopefully one day I would, but that would be hard. That's a hard one. Um, especially if, if I was in love with the person. I've never had a significant other that I was really close to pass over. So I can only imagine how difficult that must be. I would just be devastated. All right, now we're going to talk about some positive comments. Number one, Onyx Moon. Hello, Onyx Moon. How are you? Onyx Moon said, my Aries mom always want to boss my Aquarius dad. Uh, 60 years of a meaningless, pointless battles. I don't know how your father put up with 60 years of being bossed around by an Aries. I dealt with an Aries for three months. She bossed me around three times in that three months. And I never saw her again. <laughs> I never. The last time she pissed me off so bad that I was like, I'm never going to see her again. Now, um, a couple years later, I did send her a message. Um, basically, kind of like clearing the air, you know, because I, I got to this point in my life where I wanted to squash all beefs and her beef it wasn't really a beef, but I just wanted to squash. I wanted, you know, just to let it, you know, let it go, you know, just forgive that and release it. And I did send her a message and she responded. And, you know, I think it's, I hope it's squashed because I'm, I'm done with it. But she pissed me off that day. I wanted to punch her in her mouth. Seriously. And this was a long time ago. We talking like, it. I might've been like, 36 or something i mean i'm 44 now so this was a long time ago but i wanted to punch her in her mouth she lucky <laughs> she's really lucky because my temper isn't always the greatest but it just pissed me off you know and i don't know how your dad put up with this for 60 years maybe he has a better temperament than i do i have a sagittarius moon so my temper is difficult to control especially when i was younger it gets it gets better as i get older Michelle Cortez. Hey, Michelle. Michelle said, true. My Aquarius was watching me for months before he approached me. I love it. I had no idea. He told me this after the fact. I just laughed. Yeah, I mean, I don't mind if somebody's checking me out from a distance. But if I find out you stalking me, that's going to be a different story. Like uh, Joe Goldberg on that show, You that's not cool. <laughs> that is not cool. You just watching me at work or, you know, falling back, asking people about me. That's cool. But this man, I mean, Joe Goldberg, for any of you, I'm not going to give any spoilers for any of you that want to watch you, but let's just say he basically stalks a woman before getting to know her. 
And it's not just, you know, look her up on social media. Because I'm cool with that. And he did do that. But he didn't just do that. He went to her home. He stood outside and watched her through the window. He did a bunch of different stalker behaviors before he even talked to her and asked her on a date. Okay? He was following her, literally. You know, um... So, yeah, <laughs> if it's a normal amount, I'm cool with it. But when you take it to there, I'm not cool with it no more. So you guys come back soon because I got a lot more to say. See you later.